Hey everybody, this is Pete from the Spin Rack, and we also have Calvin Ellis ready to rock. Today we're gonna get to the response from Sam Jackson, and then we're gonna go in. So I'm not allowing Cal to just start up and attack. I know he wants to, but um, is this I thought it was a play thing here. Let's see. Now, now, why would I want to attack Quentin Tarantino? <laughs> is there anything Quentin Tarantino has done or said? That would make me, a guy like me, want to attack him. I mean, come on. He's a reasonable guy. He wouldn't say anything off the cuff. He wouldn't say anything that just flat out untrue or spin some sort of tale or be so taken with himself that he actually believes that what he has to say is of any particular gravitas. No, he wouldn't do anything like that. So there's no reason for me to attack him. I don't know if we're going to, if we have to, how much we have to listen to to get to this thing. Let's see. At Walmart, save Sorry, on thousands of. Turn that off for a second. But yeah, basically, Tarantino said something about um, the Marvel movies not having movie stars in it. And of course, Sam Jackson being a somewhat of, oh, this is a whole nine minutes. We're not getting to that. Sorry. So ultimately, he responded back basically because uh, what's the name said? Captain America is the star of the movie. Thor is a star. These guys, they just interchangeable type of deals. And Sam Jackson, who is a movie star, you know, said something back. Obviously, he would, because he when when Spike was saying his things, he spoke back to Spike. Of course, he's gonna go back at, at Tarantino. So we, you know, for my taste, actually, I'm not gonna go to my taste. I said I was gonna hold back Cal since it's gonna take too long, nine minutes to watch the view. I can't do it to get to like two seconds of comments. So. Cal, let's hear your thoughts on what was happening. I gave the backdrop. You can start off, start and re reiterate anything you want. Here you go. It's uh, it, 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 the hypocrisy is so thick. You know, you 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 can choke by inhaling it. It it's it's a ridiculous comment that people are going to see the character when the movie is about the character. Nobody shows up for the actor to when, at a James Bond movie. Everybody is going to see James Bond. That, that's no different than any of these other films that are based or character driven. It would be the same if the film was about Zorro. It's the same if it's about Captain America. It's the same if it's about Superman. It's the same if it's about uh, folklore heroes like from the Gung Fu, Gung Fu flicks like, uh, like Chen Zen. It's the same. So that type of comment, it, it's really off the wall because he's a filmmaker. He has to know this. He has to know this. And then it also looks like sour grapes on his part because people were not, he doesn't do in character film. People were turning out to see his film because it was a Quentin Tarantino film. Yes. So it wasn't necessarily yes. what the yes. subject matter was. Quentin Tarantino's name on the film was to get people in seats for that. And so now you have not necessarily the flip side, but another facet of that same sort of direction. And he's making these ridiculous comments. People turn out for the character. People turn out for the actor. People turn out for the director. Okay, any number of reasons will get you over there, and that's how they market these films. A film by Quentin Tarantino. Okay, the next Captain America, the next Captain America film, Brad Pitt's. You know, Brad Pitt is Mister Nobody. You know, whatever the name of the film is, at the end of the day, that's how it works in Hollywood. He has to know this, and yet he still makes these particular comments, just like he made that ridiculous comment about Bruce Lee, which we will not forget. Quentin Tarantino, you lied, you lied, you lied, okay? We haven't forgotten any of this type of stuff, and that's why your judgment and your criticisms when it comes to film are suspect until you finally man up and apologize for what you said about Master Lee. There's a cell, there is a cell waiting, okay, for people who take, okay, who take the truth and ball it up just so they can spin it to make some some sort of hot topic out of the whole thing. And until he apologizes, that's where he is in. You are in the cell where nobody's going to take you seriously, or at the very least, all of us who respect Master Lee, we don't take you seriously. We don't regard your criticism. And this right here is another example why. <laughs> well, I would go at it. I mean, I'm not that's not disagreeing with most or anything. It just I would go at it differently because you're, you're strong. The, the point I definitely agree with is that a lot of Quentin Tarantino films are sold on the fact that it is a Quentin Tarantino film. The fact that Jackie Brown did as well as it did. You couldn't just open a movie with Pam Greer 
as much as I would be possibly the only one in the theater and I would have wanted that to happen, it just doesn't happen. Sorry to say that's the true testament. And she is a movie star and something you can go, but you're going for that. But at the same time, they didn't he didn't cast Jackie Brown as a nobody, right? So there was some name there. And that's the same going for the Marvel movies. Whether you say wherever Robert Downey Jr. was in his career, he still had a name that someone that was known. Maybe Chris Chris Helmsworth, there wasn't much of a name, but he had that's the closest to doing something. We had someone that had star quality, but you had a character that people didn't really know. So it's kind of a mutual thing. We kind of work together to make these two characters. And then you go, Chris Evans, he's already at least a, a decent name where you want someone recognizable. And that's where you get to get your movie stars. Whereas even with the James Bond movies, they didn't immediately just say, you know what? We're going to <laughs> we're going to go with an unknown. They're going, let's, let's do, let's get Remington Steele in there. Like, let's get Pierce Brosnan. Because it was like, that's kind of looked like to the audience who the next person was going to be. So it's like, this thing happens, even if you have an established sort of thing, you're still putting in there. They're not saying, oh, we're recasting um, Brody. We didn't put a nobody in there. We put in John Cheadle, who has like up for Academy Award. If not, I'm not sure if he won one yet, but he's definitely a high caliber actor. So they're not just saying, hey, I'm doing that, man. Let's get nobodies. And I've been like, you know, looking at how it works so well for with Christopher Reeves and saying, let's cast to the, the comic book, the, what is in the comic book. They've been like, no, let's see. They haven't gone as far as obviously um, Michael Keaton, but at the same time in Batman, but they picking out names they are. And obviously you pick Marvel is like the fact that they put, they changed Nick Fury into Sam Jackson. Marvel's waving to say, Hollywood, please, we want you to take this. And we've already cast... Nick Fury for you, and then he's like, "Yo, they, they're they're kind of saying me, so I'd like to he, I like to take that meeting, see what's going on." And then of course he's the mainstay in it, like they've figured how to keep him in this thing. So, but he's a movie star. These are names; they're recognizable people in your movies. Yes, the Marvel machine is a machine, but you can't look at this thing and be like. The problem is, is that he gets into these things where he says these lines of dialogue, which would be good in the movie where you say. Hey, this and that, the Marvel movies are this. Like his um, hey, there are people who like Elvis and there are people who like um like the Beatles, but the two don't meet. And I was like, who actually thinks of that? <laughs> He's like, oh, because your musical test, like, no, 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 I don't even know if that's true. I don't know if that's true, but people like the line of dialogue and people like taking their shots. You had people who are, you know, like um Lucas and um Spielberg saying the blockbusters are dead. Quentin Tarantino's going at Marvel movie before this, but it's just like, oh, oh, with Scorsese saying the thing like that, and it's their, their, you know, it's their, um, it's okay for them to have their opinion, but Tarantino's taking a little further and saying, well, they're not stars. They're like, what is this? They are. You got the classic hero. The the thing of it is, we're in the fourth, we're in the fourth stage of it, and they're doing sort of a, a against type sort of thing. They're trying to give you something that are less movie stars. Yes, um, Shang-Chi is a less of the notable moves movie star type of deal. We're seeing that with the Captain Marvels and this, that, and the other, where the machine is going and they're putting people into place. But the thing was built on having some, at least, you know, somewhat recognizable faces. So we can't even, even Coulson. Coulson is playing the character that he was in the, you know, the, the, the new adventures of old Christine. Like he's not doing anything different. He's playing that character was a fun character in the show. So they're recognizable. You can still watch the adventures of old Christine. It looks like like the precursor to like the the, the was the Agents of Shield. So, you know, what he was doing in his downtime. So in my opinion, he's just sort of BSing. So me even saying this stuff, you're just getting into the Tarantino BS when his movies are the biggest go and then at the same time people are going to see his movie for him and he's still looking for names in the uh, what's that thing he get obviously he decided that Brad Pitt is the new um Clint Eastwood so he's going to be used this like thing he did two movies with him he probably wants to do maybe some more with movies to get that sort of like classic hero like that sort of thing into these movies but 
Sam Jackson, that sort of thing. He's not using unknown. Nobody's using unknown. So if you start using unknowns and you're doing your Marvel movie saying it's going to work that way, they haven't done it yet outside of Captain Marvel, where Captain Marvel had someone with who was they found in, um, I think, in Jersey City. I think there was that, but she's Lisa. I don't know if it's exactly that. She was a total unknown. So there you go. They didn't find someone that had some sort of main value, but it's not. That's for their TV show. And, and it has the least, the, you know, it was the least successful of the group of stuff that they had so far. So what do you say? Um, yeah, I can't, I don't, anyone buying into Tarantino's thing and want to take shots, you can take shots at the movie, but this thing of, of going into movie stars where, what's Chris Evans doing? He's a big star. <laughs> if he wasn't a big star before doing the all the other stuff that he did before that and doing a Fantastic Four and whatnot, he is a star now, so. Yeah, that's the character, that character, that role made his, you know, made his career. And... Uh, again, with the superhero stuff, you're not trying to sell the actors. You're trying to sell the character. Okay, You're trying to get this character out there. The name of the character is Captain America. You want somebody who looks like Captain America, somebody who can play that particular role. You know, it's, it, you know, it's not one of these, you know, it's, it's, not some, it's not an original story. It's a story that's designed to move based on the fact that this character is already an established character has shown that they have the ability to, you know, engage audiences and can hopefully can make the leap, you know, from the printed page to the silver screen and do some work over there. It shouldn't be that. It really should not be that hard to get it. And, but again, it goes back to what you said. It sounds, you know, it's great dialogue at the end of the day. Uh, you know, some people will take, I, I, I don't know, with the Quentin Tarantino movies and so on and so forth. You got to remember that this is dialogue inside of a movie and two guys are not really going to have some debate about whether or not it's a royale with cheese you know that was just you know those are just those are entertaining lines for that and that's and that's where they should be left yeah no that's uh that's the thing where it's like um, i don't know it's like if this is closer to like the having the machine this is closer to which what was it uh the shang chi actors talking about this is closer to the classic movie making where they would just kind of pump these things out, right? They now we have a previs so they can figure these things out. But I mean, it's uh, you know, Hollywood at some point the hard part is being the artiste or the auteur type of thing, whereas and being the, you know, the movie and you can't I don't like the idea, I think when I first we first were discussing this, which I realized when I looked at comic book reviews and in back in the day, not today, because it's, it's too little to um, amount anything on a comic review. Like back in the days, a comic review would be tough on the, you know, on the popular stuff. And um, they would, you know, be blowing remarks for stuff that was different, um, indie, that sort of thing. So it would be kind of like, but that's sort of, you want your successful stuff, whether it be, you know, easy to take in to fit these molds. And if you start tearing down and trying to get the audience to stop watching this, and you're like, we're gonna go see what Tarantino's is supposed to be his last film. Like, what is he, you know, like Marvel movies or Disney will be making movies even after the, the superhero thing finally stops, if it finally stops. But it's the same way with like the, you know, like the cop drama, they've been trying to figure out the cop drama for the current thing, but the, the, the on TV is killing. It's, they got the the what's the name still works. So you can't look at it as I want to fight my competition. This is keeping the business in business. Like Tarantino doing his film and being successful is keeping him in a nice home. What keeps the movie business running and all these big blockbuster movies, whether it wasn't that before, the movie business was in shambles from time to time. And this the blockbuster thing made it into a big international thing that you know slowly got to that point. So you start tearing down the and chipping at it as much as you can, as much as you want. Once you get rid of those, you'd be like, wait a second, we thought it would be a new golden age with all our art films. It'd be like back in the day, like you know they were struggling, they were killing themselves, and what was keeping them afloat, like a black exploitation, and then. The superheroes became like the black exploitation heroes, these invincible types. So don't tear down 
the film thing and try to get to the point. I don't go too far with the billion numbers, but like keep your hundred, you know, five hundred million type of thing to keep the play thing in business. You know, because I don't want to go that far, but don't tear these things down because then you know, everyone's running around like Broadway saying Broadway's about to about to collapse. We're not going to have Broadway anymore. <laughs> no, they like, but they like saying that. They like that's it's like the cyclical thing that they love doing. Everybody loves the rise, and then you got the same people. It's like, okay, it's high enough now. Let's watch it fall. That's, like it's amusement. Like it's an amusement park ride. Okay, we went all the way up. Let's go. We screamed going up. Now it's screaming going back down. Like no, no, no. You got to be reasonable with all of this stuff. You have highs and lows, okay? You'll have lows, but there's a lot of stuff. The smart money is that these films that are being successful are supposed to allow a whole bunch of other stuff to get done that normally wouldn't get done. You yes. want to do the smaller films. You want to do the art piece. Well, it's those blockbusters, the superhero money that generate the money that pay for all that stuff so you can actually take the opportunity or the risk on those particular, on those particular films. Now, if you don't, and this, this golden age, I'm like, when the hell was this? Nobody was making any money, <laughs> okay? They were cranking out this stuff like, okay, let's see what's a hit. And then as soon as something was a hit, what did they learn? The sequel. That's the first thing they learned. They're like, what? Count of Monte Cristo? That was good? Okay, we're going to do Son of Monte Cristo, Brother of Monte Cristo, Return of Monte Cristo, because the audience would come back out for it because they loved it. So, you know, and again, this guy is an experienced director. You know, he should, you know, he definitely should, he definitely should know this. So it just really, I mean, it really just comes across like a lot of hot air and a whole bunch of cap. And, you know, both of them can stop. Well, it also, the reverse happens at some point in the start thing. Yes, you have these names and whatnot, but at some point when you're going to the movie, you don't also want it to be like, um, my joke for like Judge Dredd was, the Stallone Judge Dredd was instead of, Stallone is Judge Dredd. My joke was Judge Dredd is Stallone. Like, because he always <laughs> got the mask off and you have to see him all the time. He's just like, yo, he don't never take the mask off. He don't take the helmet off. The helmet stays on. So it's like you, you know, that's why, you know, the idea of of um doing the unknown is like interesting to me and then like doing what the Superman movie, let, let's fill you know because that was the hook they were trying to get a name but then they're like no we're going to get unknown for this we'll pay these other guys like gene hackman and marlon brando and have some other character actors in here to really kind of carry the movie but they're worried about the superman name <laughs> and having some actor and some name quality to get people to sit down there and that's the thing that you can't forget that you know we're not in the stage where we just say we're going all unknown in these sort of stories. Everyone has kind of had some sort of name, have been out there doing something. You know, it's not even like, um, what was it? Like, start the first, was it The Phantom Menace? Where um, Qui-Gon Jinn, the, you know, the, the, you know, the bad actor's known, but Ewan McGregor was more kind of um, still made indie, but make, making his way into the, the Hollywood scene and, um, Obviously, um, Natalie Portman was already kind of there, but she was still young. But everyone else is like kind of all these indie guys that were from all this indie stuff that was once were warriors and all the stuff, you know, that's everybody's indie in there. So he's at the stage where he could pick and choose talent from movies that he's seen that he liked. But most of those were from movies that were, you know, like to kind of get the feel of what he was doing with the, um, I guess, Star Wars, where you know, it was at um, the Alec Guinness. Indie. Um, hmm? It's the indie films, i.e. they were cheap. <laughs> but, you know, getting all these awards. But, you know, you had um, Harrison Ford and Alec Guinness, and then you had a lot of unknowns around them. But the thing was to wake this, you know, that keeps the thing down. But at the same time, you had their performances what really kind of sold it. I don't know if you have actors like that that could really in the, you can see in the the buy into it the way those guys where um carrie fisher and mark hamill we, we have, to, have to do an audition and it's this um gobbledygook dialogue and then you see an audition they don't make it sound like that they make it sound like it's all real that's the one thing that's hard to do and you can hear a lot of actors in the hulk when the hulk movie ang lee hulk you know one of my favorite actresses jennifer Connolly is like I'm acting to a post-it, and it's just like, 
<laughs> the comic creator, like, it's called acting. Like, <laughs> you know, it was, was kind of lost, but I would love to see people do the whole indie thing, but the Hollywood, I'm not going against Hollywood putting the names in there and putting faces to the names and that sort of thing. And, and like saying, we're recasting, we're going to put another name in there, that sort of thing. That's what they do. So it's like, we can't say that these guys aren't star. We can't say Sam Jackson isn't a movie star. These guys are people that are, that are, and he's a star. He's a definite star. But if you go, Sam Jackson is the linchpin of it, it, there's your movie star. If you don't believe any other ones are, your buddy is a, <laughs> what was it? Uh, he's kind of the star of them. Um, oh, have you seen um, The Hateful Eight? No, no, I didn't see that. Well, you're lucky because I, I, knowing you, you really wouldn't like. There's a scene in there you really won't like. But um, I think you told. I think you weren't you the one who told me not to see it. <laughs> I think every time I bring it up, I tell you. Not to see it. Like, yeah, don't waste your time with that one. There's a scene in there that's really won't work for you. But um, Sam Jackson kind of knows it's an ensemble. But um, you know, the, the thing is, go Django, Django. He wanted uh, Will Smith for it. That was his first choice. So. You know, we look at it and we like people even act like uh, Jamie Foxx was kind of like a nobody. Oh, he'd already done uh, what's the name? He already done um, Ray, so he's already a name. These guys are names, so you know, it's uh, uh it's uh, but yeah, he, he's just kind of talking out of the side of his neck again. So um, you know, but he's a a, a, a person by, that, the, hmm? by the side of his neck, we mean his ass. <laughs> <laughs> he's a neck. He said, "What is it?" He said, "Is that your face or is your neck blowing the effing bubble?" Like it's just like it's just nonsense at this time. And people buy, you know, you know, into the cutters jib. Like like I don't, I don't, it's, I don't like, I don't like buying into his stuff because you already, we've already bought into his dialogue. I don't need to buy into his commentary, right? You like it or you don't like it. Don't tear down these things. And going back to the Bruce Lee thing. His thing was he told who's that guy, um, um, Michael Jai White. He's either, you know, my character is either beating up Bruce Lee or Jim Brown. And it's like, why? <laughs> well, if that means that the reason why, because Bruce Lee was an a hole. Was Jim Brown an a hole? Maybe, but at the same time, Jim Brown was a, like, it's like I look at this one movie where he's fighting Ernest Borgnine. I'm like, this is this is Power Man. This is my Power Man. But, and then uh, the no bottom line is you never met Bruce Lee. Okay, so you don't know if Bruce Lee, as you're saying, was an a hole or not. You yeah. choose to believe that he's an a hole. That's the story that you want to go along with. Okay, I could give you three, four different stories and say, hey, you pick which Bruce Lee you want because he was not the he was definitely not going to be the same with everybody he interacted with. People will take different, you know, if, especially if you're having a bad day or a good day. But you choose to believe that that's who Bruce Lee was, and that's where you and that's where you want to go with. Okay, you never met him. So you decided you wanted to pigeonhole him and make a caricature of him at the end of the day, okay? Because he was not like what you put inside of the movie. Hey, if, if that's the case, fine. At least be honest about the whole thing. But don't come over and say Bruce Lee was a nail and you never met him. Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a hard thing, you know. Uh, it's, it's um, he's been going, to, no. If, if you say, I want to do the, I want to do the other thing that I like to do is say, if you are going to say, and you're going to bring out these truths that you're bringing out, quote unquote truths, you don't steal all of his stuff for your Kill Bill. You don't use none of it. If he, you don't like him, don't use none of it. Don't use any of his iconic stuff for your Kill Bill phony, your phony version of it at all. None of no, it. No, because then, the, then the excuse becomes, oh, I'm going to use this stuff, but I'm going to use it the right way. You know, I'm going to do it right. I'm going to show this is how it really should be done. And the bottom line is you don't, that's the foundation for what you're doing. Okay, you got all these guys running around in Kato and Maz, her running around in the suit from the, game of, from the game of death. And all of that stuff is, whether you realize it or not, homage and tribute to Master Lee. Again, hmm, anytime, I, anytime I think about it, but I try not to think about it, I try not to think about it too much. Yeah, and the the interviewers don't want to get the you know the Tarantino that's going to flip out on them and be like start when you start debating them and pointing out these other things or just saying just why why would you do this is this this is this is a fictional story why would you put in a, your real part in this fictional 
nonsense of a movie. You know, I'm sorry to say because it's a real story where people were, you know, were murdered. <laughs> yeah, they're taken off the earth and there's no catharsis to them because we know what the real story, not by your hero characters getting to have their light to beat up these, you know, finding these villains to for um this thing, you know, doing exploitation thing. Let's find some villains, some real villains, so you can feel the killing when you're just like just create a cool villain and have them stop a murder somewhere else and base it, you know, base it on, you know, as your basis, not saying, you know what, we need to redo the real story and you'll feel like how do I don't feel I know that um the Hitler didn't get burned in a in a movie theater <laughs> and what the and the war was over after that? Like what wasn't it, this uh, was it this is like Professor CA was telling me that these films I think uh was it Inglorious Bastards mm-hmm. Django and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood were supposed to be his uh <clears throat> like wish fulfillment films for lack of a better term. Like these were supposed to be like, you know, like what ifs or something along that line. I forget exactly what he told me. So I guess they could play into that. But I don't know if that's I mean, this is what he was telling me. And I don't know if that's a uh, like a fan narrative that came out or that's exactly where he was at. But I guess that's one that is one way to take it. But if that's one way to take it, hey, if this is, you know, your alternative reality and so on and so forth, I, I still don't care for what you did with Bruce Lee. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I never will. I just struggle with the idea that, you know, I understand these are exploitation films. So it's working on the idea of having these um, superhuman human type guys. And then they, not Django though, Django needs a trainer. So that's different. But doing these on the Inglorious Bastards and doing um, uh, the Once Upon a Time in in, uh, in Hollywood, but the hard part is is looking at the exploitation film, and then when you get the, the black characters like Jackie Brown, they're like she don't get to kick ass; she has to, you know, use her you know feminine ways to kind of trick people into doing stuff. And then the same with Django; he needs his white guy to facilitate them through all these movies and no black exploitation film has some white dude, white savior, helping them through this stuff and that sort of thing. He just goes, they just go in and kick ass. They don't have any, in the original Django, he just shows up with a freaking um, casket. Like that's the, <laughs> that's, the, that's the character. Like, and he goes, so-, so Well, like, pe- people didn't really think that that film and the the Django film <laughs> had anything to do with each other. I hope that's, you know, I hope nobody thought that. <laughs> pretty, yeah, that was pretty, yeah. That was pretty obvious from the jump. So, you know, ho- hopefully nobody, nobody, <laughs> well, I always, I nobody was, made that, nobody made that mistake. I always look at it, at Django as kind of his, um, his like, um, flipping off Hollywood because he was going to put, um, Will Smith in it. And the, the even though, um, the Wild Wild West is a comical type of story and like hijinks and all this stuff, like kind of a Hollywood Western with all these effects, but it had the same sort of highs and lows. You have this um, black bounty hunter. The movie doesn't work. You just put a, a, you know, a trainer in there and then people are like, yes, this works now. Like, ah, uh, this kind of feels like, and you're going to do it with Will Smith, the guy who was the Jim West guy, that people said, well, how could he make this movie? No black dudes would do it, even though obviously, you know, there was, 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 a, was a Vash Reeves, you had that, so you could say you could have a, Gene, a James West there. But anyway, I've gone too far in my complaints, which I was uh, initially, even though I said, let you go and do your thing, I've gone off the rails on my thing. Let's call an interest. Any last words? Mm, no, the less said about Tarantino at this point, the better. One more movie left and it's over. <laughs> Spinnerack. Spinnerack. Out. <laughs>